Hello, all you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we are super happy to have you here. And we just ask that you bring an open mind and heart to your listening experience and to be prepared to explore vantage points that I'm convinced will help shift or solidify your current understanding of the ultimate nature of reality in a way that is extremely empowering. Speaking of exploring powerful perspectives, I would like to gift my book, The Golden Key, Modern Alchemy to Unlock Infinite Abundance to You at goldenkey.gift, where you can get the audio or ebook as my gift to you by using the code POSITIVEHEAD at checkout. All right, all you positive heads, welcome, welcome. Here we grow again. It is a fantastic Friday here in the studio as I record, and I hope you are doing just fine whenever, wherever you are in your infinite journey <laughs> receiving this broadcast. Um, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm doing great. And uh, I have some some things and stuff and whatnot that I'd like to talk about today. So something that's been kind of bubbling with with me, and it's you know one of those things that uh, I think is really big on my in my own journey, which is how to process my imagination, and um, and you know certainly in my family line, uh, dealing with uh, fear has been something. That, uh, you know, a lot of my ay ayahuasca journeys, for example, I've talked about in the past. It's been years since my last journey, but a lot of times just dealing with fears and how to process fears and how to transmute fears. And um, I love the, I haven't read A Course in Miracles, but I know the opening line and <laughs> the cliff note, cliff note. Um, and it is, uh, it's, it's. Yeah, it's become one of my favorites to kind of go back to. Uh, I believe it is, is such a profound truth, uh, un, the underpinning of this whole situation called existence that we're we're engaged in right now. Um, it starts off this. The start of the book is nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God love that. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. So yeah, I, I'll continue to go back to that one on this uh, show because it's so profound and powerful to let that sink in. I mean, have you ever really like, um, you, some of you listening for a long time have heard me, you know, you throw this quote out before, um, done it many times, but you know, is it, does it really sink in? Like, um, what you are can't ever be threatened. And uh, what, what's the real, the real realness, the, the deep down light within the core of your existence, the light that is your being, it, it's, it's untouchable. Uh, it's, it's unmovable. It is infinitely glowing and emanating. And so, you know, anything um, that's, you know, not real. It doesn't actually exist. It's just like a, it's a, it's a shadow or a, um, you know, it's a ghost, if you will. It's a, it's a, it's a moment of, um, you know, some sort of expression that just goes back to nothingness. So anything to, that you would ever be afraid of, if love is all that's real, that's what you are, the, this, the core of your being, uh, anything that's not love doesn't actually exist. It's like sort of, dancing around the truth but the truth is the only constant no matter what's going on and that's where god finds peace that's where your higher self source finds peace is in this knowing and in in tapping into this over and over again so as i've learned to continue to tap into this um i i had a i had a great um reflection of um something that you know I, years back uh, you know, uh, I mentioned I recently just went to Burning Man for my 10th time. I can think back to, I believe it was 2011. I was uh, across from 
I um, mean, you know, those of you who've been to the burn know it's huge. So to even see someone you know is a big deal, much less, you know, who are you camped next to? And I happened to be camped next to that year. There was the, the, I remembered it because my band back in the day was Kundalini and I happened to be across from the Kundalini lounge. And now all these years later, the person who is who set the Kundalini lounge up is a friend of mine and um, him and his partner, very close friends. And um, yeah, so I went, they invited me to a very small gathering this last weekend where he was setting up the Kundalini lounge for the first time in years. Uh, and the last time I had been in the Kundalini lounge was 2011. And, uh, it was like one of the weirdest days of my life. I, I remember it so distinctly. I had, um, I had done some, uh, some psilocybin, some mushrooms, and I just had a really fearful like trip. It was like s- scary, dark, weird. Now, I remember I sent, spent hours in the middle of the, the hot day when no one was in the Kundalini lounge acro- right across from my camp, just like kind of lost in my my uh, imagination. You know, they say a worry is a uh, poor use of imagination. Well, I had all these worrisome, fearsome-based thoughts. Later that night, I had a awful interaction with the uh, police officers on the playa that was very frightening, which I think was a reflection of all that fear. Um, and so it, it was weird this last weekend, I got to actually go back and, and hang out in the Kundalini lounge all these years, what, 11 years later? And it's just brought back like, oh man, how far I've come in processing fear since that day I sat in the Kundalini lounge and then had that weird, uh, very weird night. Um, yeah. Um, so just thinking back on it, I laugh because how have I gotten there? Um, how have I gotten to the point where my you know, all this creativity, I consider myself to be a very creative per- person. Well, that can turn on you if you're, you know, creative in your, in your imagination around fearful, dark thoughts, right? And what has really worked for me, um, and this is something that I actually, you know, I don't post a ton on social media, um, but uh, it, what I posted earlier was my thoughts around this that I wanted to share today, and I'll go ahead and read it. When fearful thoughts arise, I don't run from them and I don't run with them. I simply observe, acknowledge, and naturally release them by realigning with optimistic thoughts. That's really been the game changer for me, this formula. Fearful thoughts arise, and they definitely will. I don't run from them, and I don't run with them. I don't take the bait, right? I don't Oh, oh, let me run, you know, back then, I think 2011 at the Kundalini Lounge, man, I was running with them big time, right? Um, and now I see them and observe them. I acknowledge them. Hmm. Even that's interesting. Um, and now how can I be aware of what's happening and just slowly, not in a running panicky way, get away from that. That's dark or scary or whatever. Um, hmm. Okay. Let's, let's reach for something a little, a little, uh, friendlier, (laughs) uh, something a little more optimistic. And by doing that, by aligning, you're aligning with love, right? Now you're aligning with the only thing that's real. Uh, the, like we talked about a few moments ago, the power of love. So you're now tapping into that vibration. You're moving from your head into your heart when you do that. Um, your, the heart sends twice as many, many signals to the brain as the brain does to the heart. It's really meant to be the center of your awareness and where you navigate your 3D physical vessel human life from. And, um, you know, of course, our society, I think, has gotten really lost in the in the in the head and uh so you know expanding into the heart and this has been such a game changer for me by learning not to run from it um because you know when you're running from something it's like what happens when you run from uh, a bear or a lion if you come across them in the woods instantly it <laughs> it, it it invokes fear and feeds the fear which only give, makes it stronger and then causes the animal instinct to attack, right? So don't run from it, but I don't run with it. And, uh, and just gently shift my focus. And uh, that, that has been all the difference for me. And taking the time, you know, to, to helping others to do this is, um, is it feels really good to just share. And in this case, I'm sharing it with you guys, right? And I'm sure there's some of you out there, it's like, oh my gosh, yes. Thank you for giving me this tool and sharing this tool with me. 
And um, now how do you then expand on it by sharing that loving vibration with as many others as possible. I mean, that's the that becomes the next move. Like, how do we bring everyone, as many people as possible, into this heart coherence? Whereas the the healthiest, uh, most powerful place for us to to, to live from. Um, I saw a, a quote that you know Terence McKenna said. And it's saying here, I just pulled it up again. It says last words interview. So I don't know if these were some of his last words or there's a particular interview called last words, but um, be cool if these were some of his last words ever in an interview. He said, it is all about love, making someone else's existence just a little easier. Nothing else matters. I know this now. And um, whenever you get caught up in, okay, I'm now not operating just strictly in fear. I found you know, a loving center that I can return to over and over again, you know, okay, what's a, what's a different type of fearful thought? Oh, who am I supposed to be? How am I supposed to, you know, leave my legacy and make this huge impact? Or, you know, what, you know, what, what is my purpose? Your purpose? Making someone else's existence just a little easier. That's everything. It's like Jim Carrey's uh, quote, the effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. So take time to do the work with other, others. I, I had this come up, you know, in the last week where, um, you know, uh, and, and I'm, I can't remember if I mentioned this on the show or not, but I had an issue with a um, first kind of challenging roommate we've had here at the Mystic Manor in a while, and they, they departed, and uh, we had some back and forth after they left. And I spent three hours or so crafting an email to this person. Um, I tried to get on a call with them. They kind of dodged that. Um, and it, you know, we were, we were disagreeing about some things and I was like, you know what, this is worth it. It is worth it for me to take the time to share what I need to share. Not quickly with, you know, when I think I have a, such a love hate with writing because it's, it can be, it's such a powerful way to communicate. And even like, you know, like the golden key, my book, right. Um, it is, uh, it's not that long, a hundred pages, three hours to listen to or so. But man, to get it where it's just meticulously written and it, everything lands the way you want it to. I mean, even now I want to go back and do another edition of it. Um, so it's it's kind of like a love hate with writing because it's it's you know so much more uh, time uh, you know painstaking from a time perspective than you know turning on a microphone and just kind of reforming. And so, but uh, I took the time with someone uh, to. To, to not even knowing will I have the effect I want on this person or not, but just the chance that I could based off of all of our interactions. And, you know, it's like it, it was, it became, you know, very important. It's not, it's not making me more money or expanding my business or any of those things. It's um, really, you know, I don't know that I'll ever even see this person again, but I wanted to, as a last hurrah with my, our interactions, to take the time to uh, hopefully leave a, a, an impact that, you know, uh, affect them in a way that would benefit their life moving forward. And whether it does or doesn't, I don't know. Um, but I know what my intention was. And so I think that's the thing. As you start to get your fears under control, you start to move into, you get really grounded in, in your loving center. Okay, you know, now what do I got to do? Do I got to go be the, the biggest you know, life coach on planet earth or podcaster or, you know, all these things we see so much of out there. No, you, you need to, maybe it's writing one email that, uh, you know, it's like I've said so many times before, who is more important, Gandhi or Gandhi's grandmother, meaning, you know, the person that impacted the person who went on to impact millions or, you know, you never know whose life you're touching and what the ripple of that impact, uh, will be. And, uh, I often think, uh, selfishly about, reading uh, um, a while back and I can't remember where but it's always stuck with me that like you know when you have your life review you'll see everyone that you affected and everyone that they affected and uh, you know get to feel those positive or negative repercussions so um, you know as you guys have heard me say many times I, I, I want I want that big afterlife party <laughs> celebration uh, when uh, when it's my time. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, how many ripples, how many positive ripples can I make? 
And, uh, you know, by taking these two sort of things together here and, and, you know, strengthening your own resolve to come back to love, to come back to the center of the untouchable uh, within you. And now how do I share that with others? And you'll know when's right. You know, it doesn't mean to, you know, it's really finding the balance of like, you know, I've got to preach to everyone I run across or like the more you listen to your intuition about how much energy something does or doesn't deserve, the, the, it's it's going to lead you, you know, it's, it's the most, the intu- our intuition is the most powerful source of information and knowledge and guidance there is. It's taking into account so many factors beyond any calculations you could ever make um, consciously. And so I think uh, it's worth it to work that muscle out. Um, to get the the best you know tips on how to how to navigate uh, your life uh, you know that's your that's that's it that's the best hotline you got is your your intuition so make sure it's a clear line right work on that line of communication all right folks that's my story I'm sticking to it I do have a track to leave you with today it is a uh, great artist I really enjoy Ataya A T Y Y A This song is called Moonlight. Till next time, journey well. Love you so, so much. Also, before we queue up today's song, as a quick reminder, don't forget to download the Golden Key audio or ebook as my free gift to you at goldenkey.gift using the Golden Key code POSITIVEHEAD. And please, if you enjoy my gift, leave a positive review on Amazon so others can unlock their lives with the help of the Golden Key as well. Thank you.